Yo, 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 homies! This is Joseph A. Sabora here, keeping it real in the hood with my new movie review this week. It's called Straight Outta Compton. With my homeboy Ice Cube, Dr. Dre, Easy E, MC Ren, and DJ Yella from the group NWA. <laughs> yeah, I know. It, it's a biography about them. And surprisingly enough, it actually did very well at the box office since it's released on August 14, 2015. 14, $5.7 million dollars out of its budget of 28 million. Yeah. <laughs> it's been years since they tried to do a biography since its development back in 2009. So they finally got its release in 2015, especially in honor of its 20th anniversary of the death of their rapper, Easy e So anyway, the movie stars O'Shea Jackson Jr., which happens to be Ice Cube's son, Corey Hawkins, Jason Mitchell, Idis Hodge, Neil Braun Jr., Paul Giamatti, Marlon Yates Jr., Corey Reynolds, Nate Ellington, Alexandra Shipp, and Angela Elaine Gibbs. It's written by Jonathan Herdman and Andrea Burloff, and it's directed by F. Gary Gray. The same director who gave us films like Friday, Set It Off, The Negotiator, and of course, uh, <laughs> The Italian Job, the remake. The movie begins set in Compton, California in 1986, leads a group of friends, Dr. Dre, Easy e Ice Cube, DJ Yella, and MC Ren, to form a hip-hop and rap group known as N.W.A., which you already know what it stands for, so I'm not going to mention this in my review. Which is under a new label by Easy es company, Ruthless Records. Which then, after their first single, Boys in the Hood, music manager Jerry Heller, who's played by Paul Giamatti, in that white wig of his, <laughs> yeah, gives a new look for him. As you see, he's very potential in the group by negotiating with them and hired Easy e as their manager. While following their show at Skate Town USA, which they actually performed the song, Drop That Shit. Yeah, which believe it or not, was actually filmed just right next door to where I am. The Moonlight Rollaway Skating Center in Glendale, California. Yeah, I should know because I actually recognize the building. Yeah, and the inside too, because I actually been to that place when I was a little kid. So I definitely remembered it. Anyway, the group is being picked up by Priority Records, which gave them the resource to make their first album, as the title speaks, Straight Outta Compton. But only Easy e have received the contract from Hella and the label, while others are just waiting for theirs to come. Suddenly, Straight Outta Compton became a smash hit after its release, so then NWA goes on a national tour across the U.S., which counters many protests directed against them, which includes the cops, you know, against their wishes during that one particular show in Detroit, Michigan, which leads to a violent riot after performing the song F That Police, you know, because they got arrested from that. And after that, Ice Cube had become very suspicious of Heller's management and his relationship with Easy e which lead to having their remaining contracts that's already being written at this point. And that's when things seem to go completely wrong after the night by returning home from the tour. Ice Cube wants a meeting Heller to sign the contract papers, yeah, including the check, which he discovers what was happening as we speak because he only is making less money than the rest of the group. So as a result of that, he decided to leave the group and pursue a solo career. And that's what he did. Because that following tour, Ice Cube had a very well received first solo album. So already with his success, the group actually immediately released uh, their song 100 Miles and Running, you know, the EP album. And they actually attacked Ice Cube for leaving the group. That's when Ice Cube decided to make a, a track attacking the group and Heller himself to, which uses all these uh, foul languages, a lot, lot of racial and 
stereotype, yeah, including the anti-Semitic idea. So that's what got them really angry. So that's when NWA decided to create a second album, which then DLC had a near-fatal car accident. Then Dre wants up becoming associated with Serge Knight, who convinced Dre to leave the NWA to start his own company with him, which turned out to be, as we speak, Death Row Records. So then, Heller had taken advantage of him by by meeting uh, Easy e to try to work out on the contract, but when that failed, Dre decided to leave the group and, and already formed them with, with Knight on that record company. And following these events, Easy e is physically assaulted by Knight and his crew in the effort to pursue him to sign off Dre's contract. And in spite of that, Dre enjoys his newfound freedom by crowning me out with his, his new album, The Chronic. Yeah, which came out in 1993, producing songs for other rappers, including Snoop Dogg, which at the time was known as Snoop Doggy Dog, and of course, Tupac Shakur. Yeah, that's when he went on to do other songs, including uh, California Love, yeah, which happens to be my favorite, by the way. Dre later became very upset when he knows Serge's Knight's violent behavior and lifestyle and begins to wonder if he actually made the right choice or not. But without Dre and Ice Cube, Easy e begins to suspect that Heller's being less than truthful in the business practice. And of course, money did start disappearing all the way, which then all of a sudden Easy A started to feel very ill, trying to ignore all the suggestions from others to see a physician. But at the club in New York City on December 1994, Easy e and Ice Cube started to cross paths and and rekindled their friendship together, saying that without Heller, he's ready to reinform NWA. But then that's when we find out what was going on between Heller's embezzled money from the group and, and fires him completely. He later calls Dre to let him know that he's fired Heller and wants to revive NWA of his own. While Dre agrees, along with Yella, Ren, and Easy. E had begun to work on their new material, but that's when something went completely wrong when when Easy E actually collapsed and was taken straight to the hospital only to find out that he was diagnosed with HIV positive, which means that he has AIDS. And since then each member of the group emotionally business him before his death that actually occurred on March 26, 1995. Yep. 20 years ago. So then, they so after that, um, they started to concluded with Dr. Dre meeting with Serge Knight and telling them that he's leaving to start his own label. And that's when the whole thing started as we speak. So yep, that's how the movie ends. Um, when we started seeing, you know, basically, uh, you know, shots of how the whole group began and how it ended after that, you know, when they all became successful. And, yep, because we already know Ice Cube went on to do films like Boys in the Hood, you know, the Friday movies, and Anaconda, Triple you know, X, uh, State of the Union, Barbershop movies. Uh, yeah, you name it. E even films like The Players Club, Dangerous Ground, and Ghosts of Mars, the John Carpenter film. Yeah. And of course, those uh, Arby Daria movies. Yep, he became very popular. And uh, yeah, and of course, who couldn't forget Right Along, which came out last year. I know they're going to make a sequel to that. Mm -hmm. And everybody else, you know, went on to do you know something famous. I know Dr. Dre went on to to work with um, with the rapper Eminem and and Queen's rapper um, Fifty Cent, yeah, you know, Curtis Jackson. Yeah, all of that. I gotta say, th this was a pretty well-made uh, biography on N.W.A. I mean, hard to believe because this was actually a very popular group uh, back in the late 80s all the way through the, the early to mid-90s. So they knew exactly what they were going through after all these years. And it did introduce us to all the other rappers as we already know today. You know, such as Snoop Dogg, Tupac Shakur, which sadly you know, got killed in 1996. 
Yeah. And then all the other groups that we already know and other rappers. Now I'm going to give you this. Um, I'm not much of a, a huge uh, fan of rap, but on the other hand, I do like some old school rap that I grew up with uh, back in the 80s and 90s. So I know exactly what it was like. I mean, I, I, I always remember Run DMC, LL Cool J, Fresh Prince, and DJ Jassy Jeff, and, and of course uh, NWA with Ice Cube and Dr. Dre and Easy and all the rest. So, <laughs> so yeah. And I always loved Ice Cube actually. Ever since I saw him later on, you know, with movies like Boys in the Hood, and then of course Friday, and and all the others that he's been doing in 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 the entire career of his. Yeah, he's very good as an actor and a rapper. You know, in spite of all the stuff that's been going through. You know, yeah, he worked so hard to 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 accomplish that dream. You know. <laughs> No matter what happened, I mean, after all the police brutality that they've been going through and all the stuff that's been going on with, you know, involving, you know, gangs and, and riots and, yeah, even the the beating on, on Rodney King, yeah, they even show that clip too, yeah, the, the Rodney King, which leads to that. Man, things sure have happened since then, and, and it shows, and... I gotta say, you know, I feel sorry for for Easy E though. I, you know, after what happened, you know, it, it's just sad that that he's no longer with us. And, and he was a great rapper, you know, you know, working with Ice Cube and Dr. Dre and all the rest. You know, they they were great. You know, it's just it's just sad that he's gone. And I'm glad this movie dedicated to him too because it shows, you know, that. He's part of it, so that's exactly what the film has to achieve, and, and it's just, it has everything that they were going for. Now, I'll give you this, though. The movie is indeed a two-hour and 24-minute film. Yeah, it's a very long film, if you think about it, and I didn't mind about that, actually. It, I, I, I like the idea that it focused everything from... From when they started out, um, you know, as a group of friends before they wound up becoming, as we speak, very famous from the rap group, and yeah, they went on to do more successful things uh, at the end. And so I, that's exactly what the movie was going to go for. I mean, and yes, one of the scenes uh, that really got to me the most was when we saw Ice Cube actually bringing in a baseball bat and smashing all these records. Uh, inside the priority record the office it's like oh man that that was chilling because it really did happen too and all all of that um, that happened in, in the movie happened in real life and, and it shows exactly what director f gary gray had done and I, yeah it, it really got to me too and all all, all of these other scenes too involving um you know, drugs, violence, you know, games, riots, everything. It, it just stayed true to the material. Now, I know when this movie came out in theaters, Universal Pictures decided to have a lot of police out there, you know, at movie theaters everywhere. Because in case, you know, if something goes wrong, you know, like suddenly, uh, you know, one of these, one of these people will want to, you know, showing up with a gun. You know, during the, its screening, you know, because I know that's been going on a lot lately with violence in, in movie theaters, and I know um, a lot of things have been happening a lot lately too, especially what's going on at Ferguson. You know, last year they got the right time to release this movie at this point. So yeah, um, but I'm, but nevertheless, I, I was glad I got to see the movie. You know, I was just happy that I didn't get to see all the cops going by. Yeah, when I went to see it, but, you know, I'm just, you know, just to be safe, I just hope, you know, nothing bad happened. But I'm glad nothing did, you know, once I saw it. But anyway, I had a good time, and, you know, I, I really love this movie. It's it's well made, it, it got the idea, but then, no matter what happens, you know, there'll always be friends to the end. 
I know I kind of got the line from Child's Play, but <laughs> you get the idea. So yes, um, definitely check out Straight Outta Compton. It's a great film, and I enjoyed it. So anyway, I give that movie five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.